my revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. <laughs>that's motherfucking Rob. Yep. This is our newest episode. Yeah, I'm wearing the same shoe as last week. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never take it off. Rob will never take it off. Rob, not, not ever. See, I wasn't even gonna mention that. Rob just put him, <laughs> Rob just put himself out there. Apparently, I don't so. give a shit. I'll show my balls. Right? <laughs> Rob, we'll never see Rob's testicles on uh, the Songs and Nerds episode. I'll yeah. make sure of that. One, one day I'm gonna sneak some. some I'm gonna clip in. You just gonna see it's some nuts coming like this? It's gonna be some. It's gonna be some uh, subliminal nuts flashing. <laughs> Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Uh, today's episode, this is a very special episode for me, especially because I'm a fucking psycho nerd uh, about this. Uh, we are actually heading to uh, Cross Plains, Texas. And uh, if you don't know what the fuck Cross Plains, Texas is or what it has to do with anything, actually, uh, let me see, how can I say this? Conan the fucking Barbarian, you know what I'm saying? Like, Conan the Barbarian was written and created by a guy named Robert E. Howard. Uh, back in the 30s and 20s and stuff like that. Well, you know, everyone knows who Conan the Barbarian is. I'm a huge Conan the Barbarian fan. Rob's a big fan of him, but you know, I'm, I'm more of a psycho nut about Conan. Like, Rob's, yeah. you know, Rob's more normal. You know, he's not a nut like I am. Yeah. So I'm real fucking excited. I'm, I'm like, I, I like, you know, the Conan movie growing up and this and that. And just, you know, I like sword and sorcery in general, but I'm not quite as hardcore as Jason. Yeah. It'll still be fun for me, but for Jason, this is something he's been wanting to do for a long yeah, time. This is this, this is my second Graceland. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, I mean, I've just been uh, real hardcore into Robert E. Howard. And I love the um, the books. I love the movies too. You know, don't get me wrong. Arnold, he did a good representation of him. I I, I kind of would never see any other person playing Conan because Arnold did it the best. But honestly, that's a whole other topic about the authenticity of the the source material, how they presented it in the movie. But anyway, that's nerd shit. I'm getting left field. But anyway, we're going to Cross Plains, Texas, to the Robert E. Howard uh, Museum. Uh, it's basically, it's not an actual museum place. It's actually his house to where. Uh, it's where he actually lived and where he wrote a lot of the uh, Conan stories. He's also the author of uh, Solomon Kane and uh, various other Pulp Fiction, different characters and stuff. A lot of people consider him the forefather of sword and sorcery. Yep. The creator. Like, people don't know uh, this. Above Tolkien. Yeah, Tolkien. Tolkien was jocking Robert E. Howard. A lot of people think that... Uh, I'm not knocking Tolkien about Lord of the Rings and all that. I love Lord of the Rings and what he created. But um, a lot of people don't know that Robert E. Howard created Sword and Sorcery, pretty much like he created what it is, what it became. And uh, because back then, just before that, there really wasn't that whole thing, you know, like there was probably stories and stuff like that, but he made it, started the seed of it. Like he's like the George Romero of that kind of shit. You know, he created it and got it what it's going, got it going. But uh, so I'm real excited about seeing this. Sword and Sorcery wouldn't be what it is today. So, yeah. You know, all the video games, all the everything. Horror. Like people don't realize that. That they, they owe a lot to this dude like a lot of people may not know who he is you know they know Conan of course because of the movies but there's so much more involved with Conan than than just the movies so anyway I've been wanting to come to this place for a while um, I was surprised that it was uh, this close it's only about two hours away hour or two away and so we're gonna check it out check out the whole town I heard there's several different locations there about uh, related to him and stuff like that so we'll check it out I just want to do a real quick intro so anyway, uh, we are, where are we at now? Uh, I think we're still in Fort Worth. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of getting out of Fort Worth now. We're going to, uh, we're passing through Weatherford. We'll uh, see when we get into the town and or what else we come across. Anyway, fuck off. And we're live. Uh, we are live here. Still live. We've made it to Cross Plains, We're so Texas. fucking live right now. There's a guy over there mowing the yard. He's probably thinking, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> I'm happy to be here because like I said, this is the birthplace of Conan, man. It's fucking badass. It's fuck the haters. Anyway, we just wanted you to see this real quick. So we're almost there. We're about, what, five minutes away? Yeah. So we're going to check it out and uh, see what the hell we can go find. It's like, uh, what time is it? Uh, shit, I don't know. Three something? <laughs> Three. They close at five in the museum, so we're going to get there. Yeah, uh, take we'll this. go check it out, so hopefully we can get inside. Anyway, we just wanted you all to see that. 
but we're actually here. Yep. All right. Uh, we are here in Cross Plains. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> Rob smiles right there. We're here in Cross Plains. We actually made it. This is badass behind me if you can see it. This is the Cross Plains uh, Public Library. And it says they actually have Robert Howard's manuscripts inside there uh, from the original writings and everything, which is fucking awesome. But the problem is they're closed. Cause I wanted to go in there and see that shit. But uh, we just stopped right here. We just seen the cone on the wall. Conang. He is here. So we're we're in the fucking spot, man. Yeah. Actually, over here, there's a centennial time capsule. It's buried on the ground. Oh, nice. Centennial time capsule. They're going to open it in 2061. So apparently they uh, time capsuled this in 1961, I'm assuming. I, I guess that's it. The town looks like something off Gremlins. My hanky's blocked the camera. But yeah, the town square is, I guess, near here. This is just like a little strip, I guess. Let me see if I can turn it. It's more like a. See, so yeah, it's pretty much like a little, just a little strip. Yeah. Much little store, small town, at its smallest. We fucked up and uh, <laughs> didn't come on the right day, but they said that Robert Howard's manuscripts are in there. And I want to see that shit. That's yeah. fucking awesome. That's the original writings. Yep. It yeah. is the original scrolls. <laughs> We must um, see them. <laughs> shit, I guess we're gonna head to Robert E. Howard Museum. The motherfucking house. Yeah. I wanna see uh, where, where he died. Yeah, Rob's all being a bastard. He's more of a thing. I wanna see where he died. And I was like, bastard. Yeah. It's terrible, but <laughs> we'll be back here in just a minute. Alright, um, we're actually arriving. This is it right here. Yep. That is the Robert E. Howard Museum. That is freaking awesome. Can we pull up in this park or what? Um, that's a good question. Hey, there's Robert E. Howard's house. We're gonna park, uh, I guess, right here or something. We fucking just bossed up in this bitch, like, <laughs> there's no one else I'm here. Just gonna fucking pull over here. There's no one else here. There's a sitting area over there. Let's run front. We'll just knock. Oh. Fucking, I'm knocking this bitch. All right. We have arrived. Me and Rob, we're jocking. Yep. We're standing on the porch of Robert E. Howard. This is his Sorry. house. Sorry. 625. Cross Plains, Texas, or whatever. Pretty damn crazy. This is where uh, Conan was born. This is, yes, this is, for the nerds out there that don't give a shit, fuck you. <laughs> this is the birth of Conan, you know what I'm saying? Um, apparently there's no one here, of course. It says there's a number there we have to call for a personal tour. But the problem is, there's no reception out here. We're in the fucking, in the sticks. So we can try to go into town, maybe, like over there, yeah. maybe, and see if we can get some bars. Yeah, Looking for bars. Fun. And let's get the fuck out of here before they call the cops. They go, we got some lawyers over there at Robert Howard's house. But uh, anyway. Did he uh, shoot himself? Or? Unfortunately, yeah. He was upset about his mom and he killed himself. Which really sucks because it leads you to wonder what kind of other shit he would have been able to make if he had lived. Other kind of Conan stories because like I gotta tell Rob all the time I collect the Conan books. I've gotten a lot of his, but I don't um, personally collect any other authors that have released Conan yet. That's nothing against them. It's just I personally would rather have uh, Robert E. Howard's stories first because, of course, he created Conan, so it just doesn't sound the same. Um, the other guys, I give them props. You know that they're they're down for Conan. They wrote stories and shit, but me personally, I'm gonna get all his first. But anyway. I want to call them people and see if they can give us a tour. Alright, so hopefully we can get inside and y'all can see that shit. I'm fucking excited. Alright, uh, we're here at a gas station. There's uh, no reception out here. And so we can't call because uh, the museum says that you have to call their number to uh, get a tour. But there's no damn reception out here and there's no pay phones. So luckily the girl at the counter, she's letting Rob use her phone. So he's trying to call the three numbers to see if we can get someone on the phone. But anyway, I'll let you know what happens. So great success. Rob managed to uh, get a hold of the, I guess the curator of the museum. We're going to meet her and she said she'd be there in about 15 minutes. Uh, she said it's free, but donations are welcome. <laughs> so I'll definitely uh, welcome. I'll give her a donation for yeah. coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we had to drive. I don't know if Jason went over or if Eva went over it, but we had to uh, go drive to the gas station and borrow some chick's phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was we stopped at another gas station at the 7-Eleven. 
that guy was he was just indifferent he didn't give a fuck about nothing yeah. some young kid uh, he just was like whatever dude I don't give a shit like, he gave no fucks <laughs> apparently cross planes has drained everything out of him <laughs> we said hey uh, so and so can we use your deal uh, and then he was like you guys didn't eat he goes Mexican city that's about it he goes, is it good uh, he, he didn't right. give a shit <laughs> I, was, I was like so is there anywhere good to eat around here and he's like Right across the street is all there is. Or it was just real fucking whatever, dude. But anyway, I, I, don't, just, know, I don't know if that's cool or if that pisses me off. I don't know if it's fresh or he's an asshole. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just happy to fucking be here. I'm geeked as fuck. Yeah. So we're right here down the street. Yeah. Back we're coming back. She said uh, she'll right. be here in a minute. So there she is right there. Oh, that's probably her. That was fast as fuck. Oh, okay. Alright, how's it going? Oh, a lot. Pretty warm, pretty warm. That's oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. But it's very we, live, warm. we live here, so we know how it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, we, live yeah, we're, yeah, oh, we came from Fort Worth. I've been wanting to come down here forever. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a little, uh, little well, over uh, two hours. Oh, yes, so we'll sure. Been here? Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge Robert E. Howard fan. Oh, so. well, uh, you know, there's so many. This is my race line. So many areas that he rode in. Yeah. Uh, and you know, some people just think that he did Conan stories. Yeah. When he gets past that, well, too, you know? they don't really know. But he did some West Portrait, Western Boxing. Yep. Well, the folk and, stories, I read uh, all about yeah. that stuff. I'm trying to yeah. download a lot of it. A lot of it's open to the public. You can download the old stories. Yeah. Them. That's neat. I've been telling him I want to come here for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, you know, Howard's writings. Uh, I guess they, you'd say they kind of went dormant. They went out of style for a number of years. Uh -huh. And, then the, and uh, when Glenn Lord and the Count started to uh, reprinting and getting permission, a lot of things yeah. uh, still were copyrighted, but most things had gone in the public domain by that time. Yeah. And uh, that's when the group of us, the Project Pride group, became aware that this was actually you mind if I take pictures and stuff? No, okay. we don't have anything okay. against it. Okay. They're aware that uh, this was actually where Robert lived. They moved here, his family. Uh, his dad was a country doctor, you know. Yeah. They came here in 1919 oh, to this wow. house. Wow. And lived here till his death, 1936. And of course, he was only 13 years old. So yeah. you see wow. all, really? of those, know all of those things wow. that he had up here. He thought him up in this little house. That's what's so neat. Let's step right in here. Cross Plains was uh, a small all known town. Mm. And if you know anything about in the 30s when the cable tube read in, 500 foot stuff, everybody came in because there's money. Yeah. Rough. And his dad, being a country doctor, uh, it is thought that they probably came here uh, accidents and things like that would have been money for his dad and uh, things were rough and not normal, and that helped him, I think, to create some of his imagination and his Yeah, character. definitely. Uh, okay, the small house, of course, doctors weren't rich in those days. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, this was what you call old town. The town moved up uh, later on, but this is really the only house that's left in this area of the original uh, town. It was actually established in 1911, so see, the town was fairly. Yeah, you know, yeah, at that age. Yeah. But it was living room, dining room, kitchen with a foyer, like we came in there, one big front bedroom, and a big L shaped sleeping porch, back porch. Oh, that's neat. Of course, you didn't have any air conditioning. Yeah. Oh, I'm water, sure it was. <laughs> didn't have indoor plumbing. Yeah. And uh, you opened the windows and the doors. But huh. uh, when the uh, you knew that Robert took his own life. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and his mother had tuberculosis. He was well. Was he real close to her? I guess, and he was just upset. And uh, well, she was near death. Yeah. Of course, she had been bed fast for some time. I heard he had mentioned that before. He had, TV, he had know? said it before. And, and, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he had asked uh, his dad and others that were here had been sick with her. Did uh, they think that she would know him anymore? And they told him probably not. Uh -huh. And he went out to the backyard and to his car. Yeah, that's what I heard. I wasn't sure where, where it happened. Yeah, but right behind the house. 
And one of the ladies uh, that was here in the house, happened to Miss Howard, was still living when we started to oh, really? That's to neat. restore the house. Well, well, there was a number of people, you see. Yeah. This is 29 years since we started to restore the house. And uh, there were a number of people still living in New Howards. Yeah. And it was easy for us to come back in uh, to this house that was then used as a rent house. Mm -hmm. uh, very unkept. Right. And uh, go back to trying to restore it to its original thing. Hmm. Tear out the old shag carpet, hmm. take the paneling off the walls and find the uh, back to the walls and put the walls That's awesome. And everything yeah. hmm. up. Well, I'm glad and, they did that. Uh, and at that time, uh, they told, well, when Dr. Howard left here, see, he left here right after their funerals, hmm. to go over to uh, uh, Ranger. Six feet miles away, twenty four. Yeah. And uh, to live with Dr. Cotton mm. and to help him in his little clinic. And he kind of gave away the things out of the house to the neighbor women. They had all come in. Mm. Like you did back in those days. You come in and, and helped, you sat, you spent the night. Yeah. You took care of yeah. the grieving family, you know. Yeah. And we were able to give back quite a few things. Oh, that's awesome. From some of those people are not from them directly because a lot of them had passed on. Yeah. But we got things back from uh, uh, their nieces, their nephews. That's awesome. And yeah. that, this wow. trunk was Dr. Howard's trunk. So that's that's his name. <laughs> uh, uh, right there. That's awesome. Uh, trunks. It was those people had it in their house. You know, old trunks smell good. <laughs> it smelled like a trunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got the whiff of it? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. that's it. It smelled like a trunk, didn't it? Yeah, when I was little, I used to have uh, a similar one. And one of the ladies had this picture. She said that she took it from the house. Dr. Howard said for them to select things that they'd like. Hmm. And, uh, of course, people still do that to some extent, but not like they used to because, see, Robert was an only child. So there weren't going to be people to inherit yeah. Yeah. the things. And this little base was Mrs. Howard's. And the other pieces are period pieces. Oh, okay. Uh, the ladies said they had iron bested, which is what your grandparents had. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. uh, wow. and she had her little sewing machine. And then a place to keep clothes. But you know, back in those days, people didn't have a lot of clothes. <laughs> yeah. They had a Sunday dress. It's real simple. And then they had their work clothes. And that was about uh, it. Uh -huh. This wow. is Dr. Howard in his older days. He was a big guy. I never got to see him. Robert was a big guy. Huh. Okay. And that's Mrs. Howard. We don't have an older picture of her, yeah. but uh, she probably was not photographed too much. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go across and come back around. Okay. In the living room. Uh, the four pictures on the wall, they were, they actually from from the house. A lady had those and gave them back to us. Yes, I'm and, glad they did. Uh, we didn't have a clean or anything there like they were. And these books are not books that Robert wrote. They are books that he had in his library. Oh, that's personal and collection. They were actually donated uh, to Howard Payne College in Brownwood. But hmm. they didn't care for keeping them anymore, and they gave them back to us. Hmm. And most of them, that's a list of the books there. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them were published uh, 1916, 19, 23, 27. Wow. Uh, and some of them are actually children's stories. That's awesome. Hmm. That are interesting. Wow. These books over here uh, were Dr. Howard's books. They are not any specific thing. They have Dr. Howard's book play them. Oh, that's neat. And uh, uh, some of them are uh, biblical studies, and then some of them are related to such things as delivering a baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just kind of a box that a man had. Yeah. That uh, of odds and ends, it was probably supposed to have been destroyed back when they left here, but instead they wound up in somebody's attic. Huh. Neat. And, uh, Wow. Uh, the dining room, uh, the ladies told us that they had a big round dining table and a dish cabinet. They didn't really eat in this part of the house. 
It was mostly papers and books. Dr. Howard was a big reader. Mm -hmm. He was not a writer, but uh, he read a lot. And of course, yeah. Walker read the thing that he did stand on, uh, along with his writing. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with a Western book, A Gent from Bear Creek? Yeah. Uh, yep. That's the only hardback book that was that Robert oh, that's ever awesome. published. And it actually didn't come off print until after his death in 1936. I heard that he never even seen a book published in his lifetime until afterwards. Uh, yeah. A book. Uh, it, his uh, works all were to the pulp magazine, Weird Tales. Yeah. Uh, that is a copy of the slip cover we didn't have. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And actually, this book belongs to the Robert Howard United Press Association. But, I read about uh, the Bear Creek. But uh, they let us have it. I call it. A book of short stories. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, the bust of Pip Actor, Robert bought it on a trip to Louisiana uh, when, after they moved here, probably 14, 15 years old. His mother had relatives in Louisiana and they visited back in Louisiana. The significance of this little book uh, has the poem, uh, the, the House of Caesar, mm -hmm. and uh, the lines that. Uh, uh, that Robert left in his typewriter oh, before yeah. his death. Uh, that was his note. Uh, people originally thought that they were his lines, mm -hmm. but then it was discovered later on that they were actually uh, taken from this point. Yeah, I remember reading the about House that. of Caesar. They didn't, they were, they didn't understand. Of course, they were and... his, but he, uh, they at least expressed his, yeah, uh, his train of thought, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. That's neat. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's something. This is a. Uh, I'm just looking at you guys and thinking of things you'd be interested in seeing. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> Some people, okay, yeah. this is a high school English paper, 1921. Oh, shit. Wow. It's That's transcribed awesome. over there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, his writing, his handwriting. Is this the actual paper or a copy? Uh, it's a copy. Okay. Uh, we couldn't afford to pass oh. <laughs> one out. Uh, yeah, I understand that. And little notes in the margin from his teacher. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. About that oh. it may be a a great writer someday. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that's what it says. But I turned over to see what he, a grade he got, uh -huh. and he got C minus. <laughs> but you know what I'm thinking? That a young high school English teacher yeah. probably had no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, nope. yeah. That'd yeah. be my guess. Yeah. Uh, his writings and his use of words uh -huh. was probably above yeah. her thinking. Oh, his, his narrative see, was something but, when I read it, his books. But see, he... He had no formal education. He's hmm. bound to have been just specially uh, gifted. Gifted. Hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, I was looking. Uh, he got B minus on one. There's a B minus, but yeah. uh, there's another one over here. See? C minus. <laughs> That's neat. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but had she understood, I'm sure it yeah. probably would have been different. Yeah. Uh, this. Wow. It's just a list of what he had published hmm. from the time he started writing until some things that was published in not, after his death in 1937. Hmm. But a lot uh, of stuff. Quite a bit, yeah. Most of, and it was all to the pulp mm -hmm. magazines. Mm -hmm. Yep, weird too. Uh, That's how much they paid him, I guess. Uh, of course, he, uh, you uh, you possibly read uh, somewhere where he did have some trouble collecting from some yeah, of his. Yeah, doing the pain, uh, he was struggling. Uh, yeah, he was struggling, hmm. but. If he had collected on one of these, now I was born in 1929. I'm 86 yeah. years old, so oh, well, I've been around a while. Yeah. And in 1929, we were farmers. My mom, we sold eggs for as little as five cents a dozen. Did you imagine the, the And amount. if you had a job, $30 a month, you'd have been rich. Huh. Of course, farmers survived. Yeah. But people that had to have jobs, and if he had brought in uh, $20 and $75 and $100 in a year, Yeah. he had more money in cross planes than anybody else. Huh. That's but awesome. still, people still didn't understand him. Yep, yeah, they thought he was, for the time, the stuff he was it writing, was he was just out of place. They, they couldn't treat him. Huh. Uh, well, one lady, an older lady, when we started working on the house and we were trying to get some period piece of furniture, she was breaking up housekeeping and I asked her about maybe a chair or just something that we could get because we couldn't get enough of their real stuff, you know. Yeah. And she said, well, Earley, 
I can't understand why y'all are making such a fuss over that crazy kid. His <laughs> no. daddy was the doctor. Yeah, yeah, right. See, I understand. The there. Yeah. He was saving lives. Yeah. And this crazy yeah, yeah. kid. Huh. Of course, now. They didn't get it. No. Yeah. But were they supposed to at that time? No. Yeah. They didn't understand. You know, that's uh, neat. They didn't understand. So. Huh. Yeah. huh. Uh, let's go way back around and come back to another fun. direction. Oh man, that coming in, that is so awesome. Yeah, that's... We have to keep back there. Here in the hall, All right. uh, the famous yeah. Chap Brown that, that, picture. That's that picture. Uh, somebody <laughs> told me that they called it, oh, it was some, uh, what person? Fedora? Yeah, something. Anyhow, I call it Chap Brown Yeah. Uh, but all the price, that, that was the high school English teacher here that he became friends with. Mm -hmm. And a romantic situation, more on her part probably than his. Huh. But uh, uh, she aspired to be a writer. She was young, 23 years old. Wasn't and, she in the movie? Uh, in the movie? Uh, yeah. the, that's what the movie was made. But yep. she, uh, Renee. Zellweger? Zellweger, yeah. I was just telling him about that today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, and uh, this is Robert made out here at Berkey, at the Berkey Bio, which at that time was uh, a big group. Mm. Now, with all the uh, retention dams, it's not such a big waterway, mm -hmm. but back then it was. Mm -hmm. This is Robert. He liked boxing. Yeah. But he wanted to keep looking like a real he man yeah. himself. Uh, his dad didn't encourage him in his writing much. He actually wanted him to get out and get a job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because he, he did not. Mean, his mother now did. Yeah. Oh, okay, wow. that's my favorite picture. Oh, that's awesome. He's standing right out here. Yeah, yeah. that's so neat. And that's his dog, Patches. <laughs> yeah. And sure. you see the little sign right there. We made us a sign that said Dr. Howard Residence. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, awesome. Like original. People told us we made it too big, <laughs> but you know what we did? We counted the boards. Oh, oh the really? House. See, that's how That's you neat. Know. That's right there. That, yeah. That's detail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now this is his mother, and that's the dog Patches. His mother was a little bitty lady. Huh. And it's made right out here. On this side side, I house. figured it was on the side of the house. Yeah. This little picture, you remember your grandparents probably had some little pictures that were kind of brown and yeah. had a little lacy edging around them, Kodak pictures. Uh -huh. Okay, one of the ladies that sat with, helped with here with Miss Howard in the house asked us, said, you know, somewhere I've got a little picture of Robert made out here at the front. Would y'all <laughs> want it? <laughs> we could hardly wait. Yeah. <laughs> And that is a picture that she that's had. It. And that is awesome. to me, it's the greatest picture we have in the house. Yeah. That's, a good, that's the best connection you have right there. Yeah. Uh, this is Robert made at the back of this screened in porch. Uh, back when he had screened in porches in the winter, you mm -hmm. tacked ducking over the screen to make hmm. it warmer and some of you took it off, you uh -huh. know? Yeah. You'd have to go to your great grandmother and remember that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember that picture. This is him, of course, to go. Look, look how much he looks like his mother. <laughs> that picture. Oh, right? yeah. His eyes. Yeah. Uh, this picture here would have been made right here at the back coast where I'm parked. Huh. And the reason I know that, it's just a single window. Uh -huh. It's the only one in the house except oh, yeah. the one on the front porch. Oh, okay. And so it would have been right back there. Yeah. This picture was probably made before they moved here because he was 13 and I believe he's a little younger. Lived in Brownwood? Uh, no, they lived over close to Mineral Wells. Oh, okay. Uh, at Community Peaster. That's where he was born, and uh, before they came here. Yeah. Now behind you, this is a, supposedly, I'll say, a picture of, of his typewriter. A man by the name of Jay Carnett, who lives in California, hmm. says that he has the, the original. The original. Hmm. He's had it checked, you know, about the type, but there's also some other people that say they have it. <laughs> so uh. see. You never know. Uh, but that's what he said. The debate. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but he did send us uh, a typewriter of the same model, hmm. uh, 1925 Underwood. It's wow. the same model as Robert's typewriter was. Yeah. So this is... Uh, and this is that uh, portion uh, where this is right here. Let me step right in here. Uh, this is where the wall was to that part of the screen of the porch. Oh, okay. And then oh. it turned. It was nail shaped. Oh, okay. uh, sleeping porch. And what they did to make him a little, uh, a little room was 
cut off this portion of the porch, and then they just had a long oh, okay. uh, porch and made him a little room, and the window was never closed going into that bedroom. Oh, okay. Of course, he and his mother spent a lot of time here at home without his father because his father was out uh, going to houses and uh -huh. treating sick and the injured, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but his mother encouraged him in his writing a lot. Uh, country kitchens were always pretty big because they had that, that was the place where they gathered. Mm -hmm. And instead of making a country kitchen, we used it for this place. Mm -hmm. uh, a copy of his high born age mail. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that his world, 5,000 yep. years older than the world as we know it now. Yeah. Coming from Samaria. Before history, <laughs> but after Atlanta sank. Uh, right. Uh, the folders that we distribute. See, we have people here from all over the world. Uh, awesome. And our June, uh, Howard Days this year, we had five foreign countries and 17 states represented. Hmm. Uh, they took folders home with them and did them in their language. That's this is awesome. French, hmm. German, Spanish, hmm. and here's my favorite. Japanese. Yeah. Japanese. <laughs> yep, I told you man. Uh, uh, well, we you. have a couple. Uh, from Japan, huh. uh, he's a professor at the University of Yokoshima, mm -hmm. and he is preparing a unit on Howard's writings huh. for teaching. Oh wow! Do you That's know awesome. how to read Japanese? No, not at all. <laughs> you start in the back of the book and go to the front. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. you, know that? Uh -huh. you read this way. Yeah, yeah. So see, I laid a book this way. Yeah. Uh, his works are published all over the world. I have a lot of these. Right. Uh, this Conan. <laughs> Uh, coming to Conan, this one, Mark Schultz. Now, do you know who that? He's an uh, artist. Sounds he familiar. does a lot of artwork. Hmm. Anyhow, this is in Portuguese, printed in Portuguese, huh. and it came from Brazil. Oh, oh wow. that's awesome. Uh, his his work is is published. Uh, this one is French. Hmm. Uh, Patrice Lautenay, if you ever run across that name, he's from France, and he comes here real often. He publishes uh, Howard. Material hmm. in France. Oh, well, yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's what Cross Plains looked like in the 20s. You're not all the time. Everybody hmm. was here. Yeah. Uh, they everybody busy. went to town on Saturday. <laughs> well, everybody went to town on Saturday. That's what you used to do. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, you quit work in the field. The farmers did went to town on Saturday. You got groceries for the week and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. This is Robert next to the bottom. Uh, on that side. That's a 1924 high school annual. Hmm. Uh, and we're talking to the, the lady, the high school English teacher. This is her in her later years. Oh, that's her. Uh, oh, okay. Same. Okay. She wrote the book, One Who Walked Alone, about her two year relationship with Robert. Hmm. And the movie, the movie was made from the book. Yeah. That's uh, and everybody, the people that knew them back then, see the movie came out in 96 and still a lot of people living that, that knew them. Mm -hmm. And they say it's rather accurate. A little, it probably is. more romantic than... More dramatic a little bit. Than, well, but if it wasn't, you think anybody going to see it? Yeah. Uh, I just you watched know. it about a year ago. Yeah. Uh, she was more uh, involved with him, I think, than he was with her. He was more into his writing and she couldn't separate them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think she gave up on actually winning away from his uh, complete immersion in what he was doing. Yeah. And she moved on to Louisiana and taught school for 42 years before oh, wow. retiring. Wow. Yeah, I was yeah, just talking about Yeah, the paperback books. Uh, when somebody finds one at a used bookstore or something, sometimes they bring them to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they may be worth 50 cents, yeah, but it's possible that they might be worth $5. I collect all these. Yeah. I was telling him I only collect Howard's first before I do any other authors. I was like, I yeah. want his originals. Well, we don't take anything unless it's yeah. Howard's story. I only want his. And that, that, the little silver ones there, I think there's a series of, of seven of those. Uh, I was told by one of the guys, kind of like you guys, mm -hmm. that if I had one more, mm -hmm. uh, I'd get a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. I would have what they called a series, yeah. and they were published in, I forgot 
about in the 70s. Yeah, 60s and 70s, love. Wasn't that about right? Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't keep any recording yeah. on those. Yeah. Um, those were the guys that first came here in 1986. That's Glenn Lord. He was the literary agent for the people who used to own the Howard properties. Rusty Burke, you've probably seen his name. He I've still edits. Bill Cavalier from Indiana. Mm. He's been involved the whole time. Of course, this is my 29th year, so I've been around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so neat. The Conan comic book has been published again by a Dark Horse. Oh, I don't yeah. know yeah, how. Yeah, okay, I don't. I start to say I don't know how good it's doing. Marvel is the best. Uh, of course, Roy Thomas uh, did the Marvel. Yeah. Uh, back in the seventies. I like those. That's, they're closer yeah. to, to the original source yeah. material. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the dark horse things are to me are not like. They're new school. They're just they're, different. They don't feel the same. They're mm. not like a comic book. Mm -hmm. No. no. Uh, when in nineteen. 94, we had a bad storm. Oh, man. We had the old original fence till then. Hmm. And you can see oh, yeah. big pecan tree out here. Uh -huh. They took it out, tore up the fence, broke up the front of the house. Oh, wow. And that's when we took these little pickets and we framed those pictures. Yeah. Oh, I mailed okay. them all over the world. Oh, Nine wow. Something of them. Wow. Well, <laughs> to people. Of course, I wouldn't want one in my house. But you'd be surprised. Yeah. yeah. People care, man. They, they care. Yeah, it's, right. it's history, yeah. Uh, yeah, in here, that little bulldog used to sit in Dr. Howard and Dr. Robertson's office. Huh. Uh, they had a little office at the drugstore uptown, but now most of Dr. Howard's work was done with his black bag uh -huh. uh, out of the house. Hmm. And continuing here in the hall, this is another rendition of of that Aboria. world and it was done by George Barr and he did it specifically for uh, this particular book and mm -hmm. their memory was a better tree oh, okay. which he's still living mm -hmm. and, that's awesome uh, uh, neat book yeah. behind you uh, Ted Clyde Smith which is one of his Brownwood friends yep. and uh, Trip Benson one of his Brownwood friends Cecil Lokey uh, was a Jewish person that had a store here and they became friends but he didn't Stayed in Cross Plains long. Uh, he was kind of an outsider. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, huh. And this, uh, one of the ladies, the lady I was telling you about that wondered why we was making such a do over that crazy kid. Oh, yeah. She wanted us to do something to honor Dr. Howard. Yeah. And we'd been turning down everything if it wasn't Howard Roberts yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. And so we prepared this in honor oh, of Dr. Huh. Howard. But she says, he sat by my bed one night when I was about nine years old, having diagnosed my illness as diphtheria, so he huh. was an important person. Yeah. He was important to her, yeah. But that crazy kid. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. matter. Okay, what about the new Conan movie? Did you guys, I watched it. Did uh, you like it? If you'll be the first person. <laughs> uh, no. I, yeah. again, I mean, I'm stubborn. Like, even with Arnold, like the 80 versions, uh -huh. they messed a lot of the lore up. They mixed the Tulsa oh, yeah. and different stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. So it was oh, That's how they always have the movies. Always See, they it. sent us this, and yeah. we were going to really be ready for this new movie. But then I'm told by most of the guys that uh, it didn't really follow any story. Yeah. You know, that it was just a bunch of blind stuff. The only thing it showed yeah. was he was born on the battlefield. That's all it showed. And I believe they're making another one. Uh, but the other okay. one's going to be a sequel to Arnold's, though. He's supposed to, uh, yeah, that's going to be Arnold. coming in when he's going to be yeah. If, uh, and I hope, uh, of course, uh, uh, Frederick Baumberg, who we know that owns the uh, Paradox Entertainment, uh -huh. uh, supposedly he's going to put the money in to do it. But now, they lost their money. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. In no. fact, they lost millions. Yeah. Oh. It just didn't go. Yeah, yeah. You know. People are real stuck, real picky about their comments. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, they would look, just stick to the source material. Yeah, this uh, movie, uh, these are snapshots that were made down the location where they actually shot the real movie. You know where the movie deal is down by Smithville, out from Austin, close to the New York Anyhow, that's where they have buildings that they, they're not really buildings, fronts and stuff, you know, where they do have all their stuff. Mm -hmm. They came here and made lots of pictures. Mm. and rolled it down a lot of stuff and come back and made more but they couldn't bring their equipment and shoot they didn't actually film the house here uh, oh, they, they just took pictures of it okay. and they went down there and took those fronts and made them look like it oh, okay. mm. uh, did a pretty good job 
Yeah. This is supposed to be, this is the Colorado River, but it's supposed to be that pecan bio that I was talking about. It's about <laughs> oh, okay. seven miles out here. Uh, okay. Now, this room is the room that wasn't here. Uh, about right there would have been the wall. Uh, we couldn't take everything out and fix it back. Uh, that would have been the wall to that sleeping porch. Okay. And the big, you know what an underground cistern is? Uh, yeah, sounds good. Where it takes his water. Oh, off. yeah. Oh, the cistern, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. It's right under here. Oh, really? Because we had to put a new drawer in here. Uh -huh. And uh, the back porch door, see, it came off of that porch yeah. out where they got water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. and, uh, the, and we turned this into a uh, heel shop, gathering place, what have you, instead of trying to. Uh, um, remove it and put the porch back. Maybe someday we're not going to do that. Yeah. But it takes a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This in here, though. I imagine so. Of, what is all these pictures? Uh, okay. Uh, we're taking, I won't take you guys pictures. Oh, all right. Uh, we started <laughs> taking pictures of passers-by back when I had a Polaroid camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, now I can't get Polaroid film, so yeah. I'm taking them with my digital camera yeah. and then getting them off the internet. Yeah. But my ink's fading. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, it, the ink's well, I'm damn no. proud to be on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now during Howard days, we don't, uh, we don't take pictures. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the so second, that is June. The second weekend in June. Okay. Oh, definitely. I'm glad we come registered. Back to that. We registered 278 people. We had five foreign countries and 17 states. That's awesome. I'll be, I'll be here next year. <laughs> yeah, uh, wow. But this is a couple that comes from Japan, <laughs> and uh, see. They're from Germany. That's so neat. Over there. Do you know who Bruce Boxleitner is? The, it sounds familiar. Oh, he's a Western TV or oh, yeah. uh, person. He's a Howard fan. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, these people are from England. Those hmm. people are from England. Uh, wow. We started they out. came just to come here? Yeah. That is wow. so awesome. Yeah. They, uh, they come every year. Wow. That's neat. And we have, uh, we have a guy. I couldn't believe I lived an hour and a half away from here. We have a guy <laughs> that comes from Australia. Oh, that wow. is so okay. awesome. Can you imagine coming to That's dedication. <laughs> yeah. That's dedication. Okay. We started wow. putting little stickers where we had people coming from, yeah. Yeah, but they fall off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They, most of them are behind. <laughs> are behind. I'm, I'm kind of proud that I live close yeah. by here, you know. Yeah. 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 All uh, over the world, yeah. Of course, the, huh. the books, the Delray books, really contain most of his works. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, some of it's left out, but the Conan books, these, these two, I mean, I've this got a one, couple of these. Okay, this one and these two really uh, hold all of the Conan stories. Hmm. That's awesome. And of course, as you know, some of the stories were altered. The That's, who the camp? Who was that guy? He patched him in, I guess, and tried to, tried to finish him? Uh, yeah, hmm. and he f fell out of. <laughs> Favor. Was he just a friend of theirs, or what was the deal with No, him? it was probably a money-making thing for him mm -hmm. to pick it up and do that. But he actually lost favor with most of the real... Uh, well, that's how, I mean, I'm not knocking the other artists that do it. I just uh -huh. rather have his work, because his narrative to me was awesome, and just others don't yeah. feel the same, and I want it, his first. You know, uh, things, uh, this gent from Bear Creek, now, this is a copy of that hardback book. Yeah, I, was, I read uh, about that. We didn't get permission to uh, uh, have it until just a few years ago because they wouldn't let it be copied. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, oh, you could uh, uh, write one, but you had That's to, Arnold. Uh, Looks that's like Arnold, it. but he doesn't have much interest in us. He uh, might, but if he's going to be uh, <laughs> uh, Arnold, like another corner. He needs to get on board. <laughs> yeah. And of course, everybody has, has T-shirts. Uh, what we sizes do y'all have? We try to get, it starts with small, I'm, I'm kind of big. <laughs> oh, listen, you, you, you don't know what big is. It's all the way to 4X. Oh, wait. Because we have big guys. Uh, How much are they? 15. My, uh, we go, uh, every year we try to do a new design. And of course, right That's after awesome. Howard Days, we, uh, we don't have all the sizes. That one, I like, that I like one. it. Uh, it's hard to figure out how it, it was to use this. And turn it white on black. Oh, narrate it. You put an outline. Yeah, yeah I have uh -huh. to deal with that too and, myself. Uh, the the black one on white, I like best. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Because, uh, well, it just looks better. Yeah. Today. Yeah. But then, nearly everybody wants the dark church. Now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, the guys from France did this one, and they emailed it to the t-shirt place, huh. and we never even saw it. 
course, I'm a pipe person. Yeah. And we never saw oh, yeah. the artist. Oh, no, the actual art. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it all was done. Yeah. Huh. That is. And we do a postal cancellation at post office every year. Uh -huh. We have this year we failed to get it done. And this is the one we had this year with H.P. Lovecraft and Robert. I mean, yeah, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. Robert said the wrong way. Yeah, I was telling him about the relationship you had with him and the yeah. Tolkien, Tolkien and them and how they talked right. to you. Uh, and uh, have a Friday night meals. Uh, the city left it. We use the city on tour. The school left the shoes and sell it. That's good. That's good. It's yeah. kind of a hometown thing. Well, that's neat. Anything they... on that shelf, you're welcome to take. Okay. Uh, Definitely. Internet, you can get stuff nowadays. But birth certificate, death certificate. And a copy of Foundation, which... Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, let's see. Tony was 80 years old. And that was a person's <laughs> rendition of what he might look like when he was 80 years old. That's what I like about his story. They debated uh, the order of them and said he never really put a definitive chronological deal. He just jumps around yeah. from teenager to right. 40. And I thought that was neat. Yeah. He was open for interpretation, I guess. Uh, that one year, <laughs> our topic for Howard Days was never let his, uh, let his name fade. And so what that is, is just Robert E. Howard, Robert E. Howard until it <laughs> took on that. Oh, I see. You see? <laughs> uh, never let his name fade away. Yeah. Uh, but if you get away from it, you can't tell what it is. But you get a close, you see That's pretty we neat. Robert E. Howard and then cut out the two. But that's the one. The Western books. The only thing I have now is the, uh, is these two, and the boxing stories. Uh, they're hard to come by, even for the gift shop. The Howard Foundation uh, controls them under the paradox. What they tell them, they can do. Now, now the and, you know, modern or up to date now, like the Howards, are, who are they? Are they still around? Or there, the there is just nobody left of the Howards. Oh, they're actually There's gone. A, a great niece that was here during Howard days, but she didn't know anything about the Howards. It's just that she happened to be, Kevin, mm. see, they just had had Robert. Yeah. And- uh, He was only child, so. Okay, and at Dr. Howard's death, this Dr. Cockendall at Ranger, he left left it all to the Cockendalls when he died. He had and no one believe it to. And the Cockendalls' daughter, when she died, see, she left it to one of her cousins, mm. but now the Howard properties is totally owned now by Paradox Entertainment. They have an office in Burbank, California, but they're actually mm -hmm. And this uh, uh, Frederick Malmberg, mm -hmm. who is doing the movie, he's one that owns the Paradox mm -hmm. Okay. It uh, left the Howard family though. But... I never knew that. Yeah. Uh, there just wasn't anybody. And here, that's about. Oh, well, let me take a picture. Okay. What's the YouTube? It's uh, youtube.com uh, slash um, nostalgia nerds. Is there anything you want to close? Give information about the tours, anything you want to put for your deal for anybody? That, any information that you want to tell anybody about if they want to come check it out or anything you want to say? I mean, if they're interested in coming, if they uh, contact somebody for personal tours or show up the second weekend in June. For the Hanky Howard Okay. Well, um, what was your name again? Era. Era. Hanky. Era Hanky. Well, my name is Jason. I go by Evil, our show. Oh, wow. Well. Evil and Rob. <laughs> well, I bet. If I read all that, I'll be yeah. yeah. So, this Thank has been the tour much. of a yeah. uh, pretty awesome place that I've been wanting to come to for a while. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate your friend and everything you've done. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. I love people here that really enjoy to watch this. Yeah, a lot of big content. Right. 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 Oh, we just have people coming. Yeah, that's awesome. See, I'm, I'm glad. This morning with, uh, <laughs> with people from uh, traveling, they had called Head, traveling from uh, San Diego. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I seen the ladies stop here earlier. And they, they they stared for a minute and they drove on. Mm -hmm. so. A lot of people stopped. Uh, just, I sometimes come down here. <laughs> we came up earlier and I was like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, I'm going to come knock. I don't know if we can go in there. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to knock anyway. And then he's seen the number, luckily. Yeah. Well, we found out it's really not feasible to go in there. Yeah. Uh, 
to be over oh, time. Yeah. You did, yeah. You, you tried during like Friday afternoons and, and Saturdays thinking that be when people are coming through, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. For y'all, I guess it's better just to call Unless them. we yeah. post certain things. Yeah. Yeah. We stopped up there at uh, the town thing by the library. We saw the big mural on the wall with uh-huh. Conan. And it said the library has its original trans- trans- uh, manuscripts. They have and, some, they have but they were few. closed. I was like, oh, yeah. Right. Not, uh, <laughs> we missed it by a day. <laughs> uh, they don't have their name, but they do have a few. That's original. awesome. Okay. Uh, well, that's pretty, pretty dang awesome. I'm glad we came. Alright, we just got through with the tour. I'm pretty fucking geeked right now. I got to see a lot of stuff. If you're a Robert Howard fan, you definitely have to come and check this out. The lady was real nice. She showed us everything in depth. Um, and it's definitely worth it and it was free. We gave a donation. So definitely, man, I mean, it's yeah. people come from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was definitely interesting. I mean, it's there's a lot to see here. Like 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 Evil said, she the lady was super nice, gave a super in-depth tour. I mean, we've probably been here what like an hour or two. Yep. Uh, you know, all for free. I mean, she you could tell that she was excited to talk about Robert E. Howard. It was more than I expected, yeah. Just definitely a badass experience. It was definitely worth the drive. They had people coming from England, from Australia. But anyway, definitely, um, I had fun. This is evil. Alright then. Um, yeah.